Hi everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. I'm here with Mr. Matt Sutherland. How the devil are you? Good, how are you, Warren? I'm good, I'm good. So this is exciting because, well, you know what, we've done every level of studio through the years. When we first started, we used to do a lot of home studios. And I know that speaks to everybody. Mm. And you have... I don't know, you've built a really beautiful home studio by putting it in your basement, yep. by completely isolating it because you have young children and yep. I assume you want to work at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Very often. Yep. Yes, and not wake them up. Yeah, yeah, because that would not be good. It would not be good. Yep. You would not be very popular. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to take a look. We're in his front room here. We're going to go downstairs and check out the studio. Come on down. So you can tell kids live here. Good. <laughs> uh, this is this is kind of their area, uh, which is especially come on, Matt, nice. It's yours. It's okay. You can come. Yeah, I mean, I do play in here a lot. So. <laughs> uh, but this is great during the winter because yeah. they can, you know, not go outside. And then this is my area. Yeah. So first thing I notice yes. is this a room within a room? It is. Yep. So uh, this is two layers of drywall out here, and an air gap, and two layers of drywall on the inside. Very, very thick doors. Uh, so you can, this is, I think, three inches here. This is fully solid. This is a 500 pound door. Wow. Uh, because, you know, why not? And then this is also solid. Um, uh, and then the, the whole point of this really is to make this room airtight. Uh, uh, you could, in theory, fill this up with water and it would be watertight too. Nice. Uh, and any sort of hole, that's where the sound gets out. And so we spent quite a lot of time patching up all the holes with silicone. And uh, How's not the making... low end? If you're like pumping a, a, some sub stuff? You can hear, I mean, we have a sub in here and we'll maybe show you a little bit yep. later, but uh, low end, you, you can't stop that. Um, yeah. The the mass on each side of these walls is thick enough that it does a really good job. Um, if you have, if you're like 110 decibels and you have the sub on, sure. you can hear it, but it's it's really really muted. Right. Um, and the whole point of that is so I can be in here and be as loud as I want and blow out my hearing if if so be it. Um, so I've got to point to this because we have exactly the same one, don't we, Herrick? Sure. Yeah. Yep. We did. I do. I do need to tune this, but yeah, I've had that for twenty years now. Really great. We, we we've done a lot of records with like Trevor Hall and and, and artists that use these every day. So we ended up just buying one yeah. rather than renting yeah. it every time. Uh, I don't know why I bought it. Really, like I had no need <laughs> to buy it, uh, and it wasn't cheap at the time. I think I was a college student. But I really wanted one. Um, and then this is up here, just so if I'm playing anything else, it deadens that. So you don't. Uh, I say, yeah, you don't get the oh, ring going on. Exactly. This is beautiful. Hard and fast, dumb questions. How much did you spend doing this? Because um, that's probably going to be the first thing. Uh, like full construction? Yeah. It's a little bit hard to tell because we also finished the basement ish yeah. uh, in that. Um, but I think the studio itself is probably around 35 for construction. That's not um, bad for a completely isolated room. For yeah. those people that take this seriously, it's not in the hundreds. A lot of that, I mean, it could have been a $100,000 room, but right. everything inside of it, I did. So okay. I built all of this, I built all of this. You brought, all built the all the panels? Traps. Yep. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So did you have an architect help design this? I had uh, a designer, yeah, Gavin Haverstick at Haverstick Designs. Right. Uh, friend we know and love. Friend of Sweetwater. We split the contract into two parts. So one part was uh, design and construction, and then the second part is he helped me figure out where to put acoustical panels so it actually sounds good. And what happens is when you build an isolated room uh, and you don't have anything inside, it sounds terrible. Uh, it sounds worse than a, a non-isolated room because the sound has nowhere to go. Yep. Uh, so it sounded worse than a bathroom in here. Uh, <laughs> and so beautiful floor. Uh, yeah, thanks. I did uh, did the floor. You did the floor uh, on your own. Yep. Yep. Uh, well, I did uh, the contractor that I had to help build the studio. Yeah. Uh, helped me out with it too. We did it together. Amazing. Yeah. That's kind of the other reason we got so far uh, below what this studio could be is we found a great contractor, right? Um, which is really hard to do. I hate saying like the, the number one thing to do is find a contractor, but that's yeah. the number one thing to do. 
I hear you on that. But this is great. So, for instance, I mean, look at look at this. The space between yeah, that, these that windows. shows you how thick these walls are. Yeah. This is an operable window, so this guy opens up. And then yeah. uh, this is technically a bedroom. <laughs> right. Uh, so to make it a bedroom, uh, it doesn't According to the a, local city council, this yeah, is, this is yeah, a bedroom. It's the weirdest bedroom in the world, but it is a bedroom. <laughs> Uh, and so you need a, a place to get out. So this, I also call this my like terrarium outside. We should have some sort of lizard or something in there. Oh, wow. Uh, it looks like, like you were in a zoo <laughs> looking at a tarantula. That's great. Well, there you go. Maybe you should. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, you can also, the detail in here is uh, there's a split. So this is thick, but they don't touch each other. So the okay. room inside it has no connection to the room outside it. It's completely isolated. Amazing. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Thank you. And I love the lights inside of the panels. Yeah. Yeah. Built this guy too uh, and hung it by myself. Uh, I, I moved here from California four years ago. So I built this pretty much right after we moved. We, oh, we, we didn't moved. say we're in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not in California anymore. Not in California anymore. Um, and so this was, I built all of this during COVID. And so uh, I didn't really know a whole lot of people when yep. we moved here. And we moved here and it turned right into COVID. Um, so I had to do pretty much all of this myself. Lifted this guy up by myself. And, wow. So he's got chains on money. that. Yeah. And we can... Um, we can change the, the lights here, make it a bit more normal, maybe. There you go. That's a little much sometimes, but yeah. the kids like it, you know? Yeah. They, it, sometimes you can turn off all the lights and leave Well, you're going to have your own and... YouTube channel now because, you know, isn't it all RGB? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it. Come up from the back there. Yeah. yeah. How did you end up with the Focals? What was your choice on that? Uh, I wanted those focals for years, years yeah. and years, uh, and I work at Sweetwater, um, and there's no way I could afford focals unless I worked at Sweetwater, and so right. there may be a little bit overkill for the room. They probably are, but they're the best sounding monitors I've ever heard. Uh, they have new ones out now. Uh, which These I'm are the sure sixes, are yes? Uh, yes, yep. We, we, we just reviewed the new sixes. Yeah, how are they? Well, we... I haven't uh, actually heard They're them. phenomenal. Uh, we ended up doing the masterclass and using them for the whole masterclass. Yeah. So we had these and the ATCs, which of course are phenomenal, but the ATCs were 30,000 and the, uh, the Trio 6s were like six and a half, seven, yeah. and they really hold their own. I mean, not only do they have that great front to back with the beryllium tweeters, but the low end on them is insane. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's a little tough. This room is tough with the low end because it's, it's not a symmetrical room. Yep. Um, and so I ended up getting a sub along with it, um, just because the sub, you can change the placement. Um, okay, I see it there. Uh, and really fill out the sound. I really rarely use the sub. The sub is mostly there just to check low end. And, um, impress the client. Yeah, and it really impressed myself. I don't have a whole <laughs> lot of clients in here, so. Uh, I uh, love this. Thanks, yeah, so there is that. Uh, that pulls out, and then if you yep. push that back in, yeah. uh, the, the trick of this desk is this slides oh, this way. Oh, yeah, I like that. So, um, yeah, that's nice. The, uh, the guy that framed this room um, is a cabinet maker, and I was looking for a desk at the time uh, when he was framing it, yeah. and he said, oh, I can make you a desk. Oh, so you had it custom made. Uh, yeah, and um, I mean, that's kind of the benefit of knowing people. Uh, this is a... I, couldn't imagine what I would pay for this, but he wanted to take it on as a challenge. So I, this is, what does he, do, will he make them to order? Uh, probably not the desk. So I, I started a company with him uh, briefly. We're still kind of in business. He made the diffusers too along the back wall. Gorgeous. Uh, and so we started a diffuser company selling these. Uh, yeah. we're, we're on a temporary hold because they're extremely difficult to ship. Oh, are um, they? But we might start it up again. We'll see. He also made the sidecar. Um, all of this is Sapili. Uh, and the way this worked is I had, him, I had him build the drawer like a typical piano desk mm -hmm. would. Uh, but then he had it roughed. And I came by his shop and he said, do you want the drawer to come out? Do you, would you also want the top to slide back too? Because we didn't have the top set on. And I said, yeah. Well, what I like now is now it looks like a piano. 
Like a piano it looks piano. like a piano. Yeah. It also is way more solid if yeah. you're in like this, whether being yeah. out here. Um, and the, the nice thing, too, is that you're in the sweet spot here. If you come back and pull the piano back, yeah. now you're, you know, a foot and a half out of the sweet spot. Um, uh, and you get, you know, there's a bunch of storage back here um, that you can actually get to. It's wonderful. Yeah. So I very rare. I don't think I have ever pulled the, the piano out to play it. It just pretty much sits here. It's solid. Uh, it's sounds great. Some nice choice pieces of gear. Yeah. The Focals. I see you have the Loughton. I do. Yeah. Uh, that's the Clarion. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. I think so too. Yes. Um, and it's, I, I, I like the Clarion better than um, the Atlantis, which is their other FET mic. Their tube mic is beautiful, but I needed something that I want, or I wanted something that was on the desk that yeah. you can, you know, swing out. The, really, the, the whole point of all of this studio is that it's less a, let's bring people in here and record them, and more a, I want to record myself. Yeah. Uh, and well, I, you are a singer-songwriter, so you want to... Yeah. Yeah. yeah and really, I want to... Um, it's a space to be creative, and that's first and foremost. And if I come up with something that I want to record, I just want to get it also down. Also a space quickly. to escape to. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We were talking earlier about some of the um, coasters, uh, and this actually reminds me of... There's a, a Tibetan mandala uh, uh, art where they come and they set up in a spot and they take each individual grain of sand uh, and they make these gorgeous art pieces and it takes them weeks to do. And then after they're done, they just sweep it away and they move on to the next. And it's less the final product and it's more the art of doing it. And the lesson. And Yes, yep. Yeah, and the meditation of it. And so... That's sort of what this studio is, is I can come in here and if, if I make something and I record it, great. And if I don't, then it stays here and it's, it's the time being in here. So, so essentially, you're a singer, guitar player. You, you're choosing specific pieces of gear to serve that purpose. So I see you have the Peterson Strobe Tuner. Yep, two of those. You have two of those. Well, I got this guy and then this guy. Oh, yeah, up there, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Because why not have two, I guess? <laughs> that guy, this, so I'll give you the signal pass. It, yep. it plugs into um, to the Behringer down there um, and then gets routed up into this and then back down out here into the tuner return. And then it can kind of go anywhere. So uh, this will send to this amp. Uh, this will send to the pedal board and then to that amp. You can put it up into the fractal just like this. Uh, or you can put it up into the Apollo. I do this for bass because I go straight in for uh, bass. Great. Um, and if you want to send it to the, the Fender back there, you can put it in the amp B and then it'll go back to the Fender. So it's great. You basically just plug in there and you can send it wherever you like without yep. having to actually move. Yep, exactly. All from here. Yeah, exactly. Nice. All from there. The thing that I started using recently is the Sphere mic, the UA Sphere. And the nice thing about this... Um, I mean, I've, I've had a, a bunch of different mics in here, but th what I like about the Sphere is it's quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can just put it in the middle of the room. Uh, it sounds great. I can do a lot of things in post if I don't have it set up right. Um, it is in stereo, too. So uh, I used to spend, you know, if you want to record an acoustic guitar, you got to spend a few minutes setting up uh, mm -hmm. two, either two small diaphragms or what I used to do is a large diaphragm and a small diaphragm or... Uh, I have a ribbon mic in there that sounds really good, and that just takes time. And so I can just put that there, bring the uh, drum stool over, and you are now recording guitar. You can take this and put it on the magnetone, too, so you can get the pedal board out, and it'll record. Magnetone is stereo. Uh, so so is record. this your main guitar amp uh, mic? Yeah, um, yeah, yes. Um, the magnetone also goes direct out, but it goes from the preamp yeah. uh, left and right, and then I go into the Apollo and then add their IRs to it. The, the pedal board down here, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, that is for the Axe FX, so that's ah, kind of a, a carryover from... Uh, Your live days. The live days, yep. yeah. With the Ernie Ball volume pedal on the right. Yep, and so that becomes an expression pedal. I don't use that this much or that much anymore. Since I'm sitting here most of the time, really, you can just do that. 
You know? yep. But yeah, it's there just in case I need it. I do, I, I'm in the process of building out a pedal board. I have a bunch of pedals in the closet over there that I'll get on there. The only thing plugged in right now is the Ultraphonics. Great. Um, I love a Pog. I've never owned a Pog and I always play with them and think, I should buy one of those and forget. Yeah, that was my sound. That was the... Oh, uh, okay. So, so what I used to do back in the day before I had all this was uh, I would I have, you know, a refrigerator-sized pedal board because that's what you did You did? I know. I, people used to think I was a keyboard player because oh, yeah. I'd show up, yeah. my pedal board was in this Eric Singer, big yep. red case, you know, flight case, yep. and they'd be like, oh, you play keyboards and put it down and... <laughs> It's yeah. just all pedals. Yeah, no, I still have it. It takes up almost the entire closet <laughs> over there. Um, but I would split the guitar, so the guitar would go uh, through the guitar pedals to the orange and then into the port city. Yeah. And then I would take a line before the guitar pedals and go through the pog and the equalizer. And so that would add all the bass to it. And then I would split that out into a bass, uh, uh, bass amp. Nice. So you would get this. I mean, we were a two piece, but, you know, it would sound like a four. That's three fantastic. Or four piece. Wonderful. Oh, so you did the, what was the name of that band where they, the guitar player had an SG like this and had a precision pickup. Mm, put on the yep. low three strings, yep. and he had that sent to an Ampeg 8x10. Yep. Local H. Oh, yeah. Local yeah, yeah. H, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah was yes. A, yeah. We, a lot of people who knew what Local H were and do yeah. were like, oh, you do the same thing as yeah. Local H. <laughs> um, but yeah, I used to play out of this SG. Uh, uh, the SG is great. This is like the first thing that I ever spent money, yep. like real money on. Um, but it always had uh, a flat spot up by like the 15th fret. Yeah, um, and I brought it to get set up three or four times, yeah. um, and nobody could fix it. And then uh, about a month ago, I took this in to get plecked, uh, yeah. and it's perfect. Now, oh, um, I can't say enough about getting your guitar plecked. Yeah, we when we uh, we were here the last time, we saw that whole plecking process in yeah. Sweetwater. It was pretty insane. Yeah, this one too. I bought this. Uh, in college uh, for $100. It's a Mexican Strat. And it was, uh, it was okay. You know, I used it. Um, but then six months ago or so, I changed out all the electronics, put new saddles on it. I bought uh, the roasted maple neck, um, put that on there, uh, and then took this in to get plaque too. And now it plays like a custom shop. I mean, it's... Gotta try it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, so I bought that for a hundred bucks and I put maybe three hundred into it and yeah. A lot of my favorite guitars, in fact, actually just being here, my wife just bought me a used thin line from Sweetwater that was uh, up at $299. Mm -hmm. And it plays better than most of the guitars that I own that are 2000 yeah. plus. I've heard somebody explain this and I like this analogy. Often now, everybody uses the same machines. It's just the nationality of the person that presses the button. Mm -hmm. You know, we can say, oh, it's made in Indonesia. It's like, yeah, but the yeah. They're using the same machine that's being made in yep. somewhere else. It's all yep. computer generated, whatever. It's like completely analyzed with, yeah. within an inch of its life and, and producing a neck that's absolutely gorgeous. Yep. That was not the case when that guitar was built. No, uh, not when but, that was built. Yeah. Uh, but since then, uh, I mean, that is, that has turned into my favorite guitar. And I don't think I have more than $500 in it. Great. Um, we have a we have a Mexican jazz bass that's definitely built at a time when it didn't have all of that stuff, and it's yeah. still absolutely amazing. Yeah, and I yeah. think it was one hundred and seventy nine dollars when I bought it. Yeah, it's not about what you spend. I think it's about how you use it. You know? Yeah, I mean, this studio is is kind of uh, an example of that. I mean, there's some expensive stuff in here, but it's not. I don't have a lot of outboard gear. Right. Uh, I don't have. You're using all internal pre's from the yes. Apollo. Yep. Yes. Yep. Uh, and the, those pre's are great. I mean, for for what I'm using them for, uh, they're fantastic. Uh, I mean, I have space in there. You know, there's a few blank spots in there for maybe a, uh, a compressor or some uh, some pre's in the future. But the pre for uh, you know, you really don't want a pre for the sphere. 
uh, you want something super clean. Um, and so the, it works great with the Apollo, but it's really sort of like, I don't need a lot of stuff to do the things that I'm trying to do. Um, which is really just be creative. The more stuff you have, I think the less creative Absolutely. you can be sometimes. Yeah, sometimes we, I, I'm guilty of this, end up with some really beautiful, expensive stuff that could do 55 different jobs. Yeah. I find the one thing it does, and before you know it, you've got 10 pre's all set to do one thing, yep. which is a beautiful luxury, but yeah. it's quite comical if you think about it. Yeah. Something that costs $4,000 that's only your base DI or something. Yeah, yeah. Can exactly. give you a little silly. Yeah, I mean, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous space. I'd like to hear what you do. Let's, let's have a listen. I am in Logic. Logic is, um, it's, it's the thing that I know, you know? Right, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, well, a lot of the, um, the stock sounds are fantastic. Even working in Pro Tools, a lot of the time we're using the stock instruments that come from Logic, mm -hmm. doing some programming stuff, and then dumping it back into Pro Tools. Yeah. Let me uh, let me show you some older stuff here. I've got a, sort of the stuff that uh, I used to do here, and this will sort of show you what the system sounds like. So if we if it's we great. if we play put that to a hundred decibels and walked outside, um, you know, you wouldn't hear it. Amazing. You know, rock stuff like this. on these folk cows is ridiculous. And that's with the bass, so this is without, without the sun. With. Fantastic. Uh, and then, you know, uh, this was, uh, I probably shouldn't show this. It's kind of almost was, like desert rock-ish. Is that what kind yeah, of Yeah, well, yeah, sort of like, uh, I mean, we were really into, uh, like, Black Keys and, right. um, and uh, all sorts of rock when, when we wrote that. I don't actually... And then, you know, like, this is, this is a thing that I had up from last night that I put together. How did together you make the like, acoustic? It sounds stereo. Uh, it is in stereo, and that's with the sphere. Yeah. Um, So this is, there's no plugins, there's no mixing. This is just a thing that I did last night. Acoustic sounds fantastic. Which acoustic? Uh, that's the OM28, this guy. Lovely, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, and um, I mean, this is a dream guitar. No electronics in this. Um, I didn't go with the OM28E. Yeah. Mostly because I wanted to be, like I wanted an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't want a plastic battery box in the back. Sure. Uh, and if I, if I needed to plug that in, I could get a Fishman or something and put it in, but I mean, it just sounds great in here. It does sound fantastic. Uh, and then you got the, um, uh, just, this is the, um, this is Keyscape on top of it. Very convincing piano sound. Yeah. Um, I think there is bass in here somewhere. Let's see. Oh, well, there is also electric guitar. I did. So this is what the magnetone sounds like. Um, just DI. I think that's me. So, 
And that's, I think that is also, the vocals I think are also uh, sweet. I felt this feeling before When the heart's in my throat My feeling uh, there is a, a drum kit on this that I'm not using. Obviously. But this is this is, supposed to be a Beatles kit or something, since it's called Liverpool? I think so. Yeah, that's <laughs> the, that is the, uh, the stock uh, uh, drum kit. Uh, there's a few, but Liverpool is definitely Beatles-inspired. Yep. The uh, bass in here is uh, this guy. The... Uh, Ah, oh, lovely. A guitar player's bass. Yes, exactly. Yes. Short scale, Short Mustang. Scale. Um, uh, flat wounds, and it sounds, it mixes in with everything you want to put it on. Beautiful. Um, a signature? Who's, who's it, signature? It's a JMJ. Oh, I should probably know whose signature bass I have, but I like the, the bass. Right. It's, Nice. Twelve string there from Taylor, just to have a twelve string, uh, which I think is in, I think is in drop D currently, maybe. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. This is this is as uh, bottom of the line as you can get for a twelve string, I think. Oh, is it? Um, but it sounds amazing. Uh, no I mean, it's, a, like, it's a laminated, you know, uh, but it's it sounds like a tailor, and it's a uh, it's great to have a twelve string. Honestly, the twelve string we use is a, an old Harmony mm -hmm. um, that Scott Baxendale like revamped and yeah. put better struts on. But the cheaper twelve strings tend to record a little better because they don't have that yeah. excessive low end that is really satisfying when you're playing it because yeah. you love the body of it. But then you put a mic in front of it and you yeah. have to EQ it all out. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have the low end of, you know, a $12,000 tailor or above, right. but it's got a lot of low end. I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's a big body. Yeah. Uh, and it is, yeah, I, you know, I don't think I, honestly don't think I have recorded the 12 string yet. I might have, um, but m mostly I go to the, uh, the Martin. Yeah, it's gorgeous looking. Well, it's quite light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love smaller body guitars. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, that's the, the smaller body, the better. I always tell people that's the Rick Rubin secret. If you listen to all the Chili Pepper stuff, yeah. all small body acoustics. Yeah. And take very little work, put a mic in front of them, boom, in the mix. Yep. You don't have to sit there and EQ the schnizzle out of it. Because yep. your acoustics, I find, generally sound better when there's more mid range on it. Yeah. yeah when most yeah. people think of acoustics as being smiley faced. Mm -hmm. Frankly, it's better if they're just kind of a little bit more honky and, yep. and you can hear the articulation of arpeggios and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that sounds, you know, I haven't listened to that in a day, but that sounded great. great. And that's, there's, there's absolutely no processing on it. I haven't done any mixing. Beautiful. There's no, that's straight out of the mic and in. You probably told me, but can you remind me, what's this cab? The cab there was originally for this orange. Yeah. Um, you can go out from the magnetone into that. Before I bought the magnetone, the orange was over there and it was plugged into the uh, Port City. Uh, I bought that, oh, I don't know, ten, f uh, more than that, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's loaded in? Uh, it's uh, 212 Celestians. Um, and the, the really interesting thing about it is it has this base port underneath. So the low end uh, from this cab uh, is tremendous, uh, and it's really focused, it's really tight, uh, but it still sounds bigger than a 2x12 normally would. Fantastic. Um, th it's a, it's a absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal cabinet. Uh, I love this thing. Uh, I haven't played it in a while, though, because I have the magnetone, and I'll, I'll let you play out of this, because uh, the magnetone is stereo. <laughs> Yeah, it's bright, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 
those are Mojo Tone. I think, uh, I mean, it's a hot bridge. I think it's like the Texas hot bridge. Yeah, it was a huge. Yeah. yeah. The the neck or the the bridge pickup I don't usually use on this because it's too hot. It's but if you put it through the the fractal, it's um, uh, it sounds pretty good. But I mean, you can't like the clean sounds from this magnetone are uh, to me superb. Amazing. Yeah. And then it's. You can go right into the uh, the fractal. We'll go bridge pickup now. You can go into the bridge pickup. Wow! One into the other. So you're just sitting here, moving between stuff, having fun. As you can tell, I, I'm probably start glazing over and forgetting everybody's here and be playing like crazy. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, what a wonderful setup. Thank you. The <coughs> other kind of considerations are the lighting. So this is yep. also uh, kind of a home office. Uh huh. Um, so, so you work from here too? Uh, occasionally, yeah. Maybe about once or twice a week, um, I will work from home and be in here um, and try not to get too distracted. Uh, and so uh, the lighting all changes. It changes temperature. So you know we, we could so probably throw off all your white balance, but we can also do this, and it'll uh, turn the candles on. And uh, oh wow, you know, if, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. It's really like I'm, what I'm trying to do with uh, the guitar tones and with the piano tones and with the lighting is just whatever mood you feel like you can resemble in here. It's um, wonderful. I'll turn these back on. I mean, considering the odd shape, yeah, it sounded great sitting there. I didn't didn't hear any crazy reflections. It just yeah. it sounded like I was sitting between yeah. a pair of beautiful speakers in a well treated room. Yeah, and if I mean if you sit here, the image is yeah. is uh, right down the center. Superb. Um, and close the curtains. I don't want to walk back there, and so uh, it should work. Yeah, there you go. So it's got a couple of robots there to close the curtains. Uh, Do you pay them well? Um, no, I don't pay them at all. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Should I? Is the robot union's going to come in. Okay. Well, I'll wait for that to happen. <laughs> that's um, fantastic. Yeah. And that's it. That's that's wonderful. This is beautiful place. And as we were saying, I think it was off camera. Um, you got an Apollo. I do. Yeah. I. If you look around, uh, I'm a space nerd. I love good, uh, especially you know '60s, '70s space flight, but. That's that's my thing. Other than music, I love space. Uh, so there's a there's a decent amount of it. Especially I, the Apollo mission stuff. It was insane. Yeah, they were just taking their their lives into their own hands. To I think what's what's super cool about this uh, this model though is it comes with the little uh, the little figures that are two size. I mean, it just shows you how yeah. big this thing was. Yeah. Uh, Lego stuff. These are my grandfather's wings. I just got those a few weeks ago. Where? Who did he fly for? Or what? He was a, a Navy admiral. Um, Lovely. Uh, yeah. So, space flight, flight in general. Did he? Did he? Uh, he flew. Music. That's me. 
He flew, yeah. yeah. So thanks, everyone. Any comments and questions below? And if you're building a studio, please check out Gavin's um, series that he did with Matt. And, uh, yeah, leave some comments and questions down below, and we'll try our best to answer them. Thanks, everyone. Bye. So long. Farewell, love you, Desire, and au revoir. Adios. Goodbye.